From the LA Times on Spectrum News One, the Envelope Roundtable, presented by the United Artists Releasing, Orion, and MGM Studios film, Women Talking, for your awards consideration in all categories. Well, some signs, I'm like, yep, definitely true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> yep. Which mm. sign? I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Too much. Gary, what's your sign, Gary? What's your sign? Capricorn. Leo. Uh, Leo, my uh, brother's Leo. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. No. What are you guys? Taurus. Mm. Aquarius. Nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. You can feel it. <laughs> From the Los Angeles Times, this is the Envelope Actresses Roundtable. Our guest today, Angela Bassett, who reprises her role as the Queen of Wakanda in the sequel Black Panther Wakanda Forever this time grieving the loss of her son. I am queen of the most powerful nation, and my entire family is gone. Carrie Condon from The Banshees of Inishirin, in which she plays a woman torn between following her professional dreams or staying close to her family. You can't just all of a sudden stop being friends with a fella. Why can't I? Why can't you? because it isn't nice. Emma Corrin stars in Lady Chatterley's Lover, the story of an unhappily married woman who begins a clandestine affair with her husband's employee. You afraid? I bloody well am. And Corrin also stars in the period drama My Policeman as a school teacher whose husband Tom, played by Harry Styles, has a same-sex affair. Well, thanks for being a sport about it. Certainly. Danielle Deadweiler portrays a grieving mother in Till, the true story of how a woman fought for justice after her 14-year-old son was brutally lynched in 1955. The whole world has to see what happened to my son. Laura Dern appears in The Sun, a drama about a family trying to help their teenage son who was in the midst of a mental health crisis. It's not only that, Peter. He's not well. And Janelle Monet attends a birthday party on a Greek island where someone turns up dead in Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. That is what I believe. Welcome to the Los Angeles Times kitchen. This is the Envelope Actresses Roundtable, and I'm Amy Kaufman. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. I feel like we should be baking a cake. <laughs> I know. I, don't know why I, we're I can't cook, so I'd be no help. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. Um, so. The movies that you're here to discuss today, you all wrapped them many months ago, um, but of course are about to start up the promotional award season circuit. So before you get into that, like, what do you do to stay sane, to sort of clear your mind of everything? Carrie, I know you were saying you have a horse farm, which is very yeah. outside well, of Hollywood. Well, now that's what? a bit, no, no. A, a mini farm with, with my two. <laughs> it's very small. Like exactly, <laughs> like Dallas or something. Yeah. No, and 20 no. stallions yeah. running. <laughs> it's nice. And that's only very recent, like I've wanted it for a long time, yeah. But I mean, that would be more in between jobs, you know, having something to do so you're not kind of like hung up on like, when am I going to work or what, you know, I didn't get something or whatever. It just kind of takes my mind off it and a kind of more spiritual side to life, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Like I feel kind of needed and mm -hmm. that. But yeah, that would be kind of maybe the only thing I think mm -hmm. that I have. It's a pretty good one. That's though. a big oh, thing. Great one. Can we all kind of do this? Having kids is kind of. I imagine oh, yeah. it's something that would take you out of the industry, right? Because yeah. sure. they don't care about your industry. They, <laughs> they sure will. They don't care. Maybe on one particular night, a couple of nights ago, they yeah. were kind of starry-eyed, starry-eyed mm -hmm. and, and humbled, you know. But uh, other, but didn't last long. <laughs> no. And they were all about the Wakanda Forever yes, premiere. Okay. Yes, and everyone that Which they saw, I came everyone that they saw there and met this there. One right here. Mm. I mean, the whole like cast, the whole film was just so touching, so moving. But I will tell you, like, oh, like thank I cannot. You. If you haven't watched it, yeah. you better watch it. It is, it is absolutely incredible. So Wakanda Forever. Mm. Uh, that speak about speaking about a cast that really came together and supported mm. one another. Obviously, you're grieving off screen for Chadwick Boseman, and you're then in the movie also losing your son. Right. I mean, how did you, was it cathartic to be able to bring that off-screen grief you know, yeah. into your work? Yeah, 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 that was very helpful. I remember years ago, um, my mentor and teacher, Lloyd Richards, doing a, a play, a play with him on Broadway, and 
some of, of, of life was imitating art or art was imitating life and you were trying to keep it separate. And, mm -hmm. and he called me on it and he said, you're going through this, right? Use it. And I was like, oh, how cold. He's just <laughs> like, put it on display, you know. It's hurting, use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, pretty soon I got it. It's like, make it, make it good for something. You know, and that's what we are to use ourselves, our body, our instrument, you know, to, to illuminate this experience called life. Let our gracious response to this incursion be an olive branch. Further attempts on our resources will be considered an act of aggression and met with a much steeper response. So we were, each of us in our own way able to do that. Being a mother, losing a son, a child, mm. uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, that would, that would just wreck you. So it, it was a great opportunity. Mm. Yeah, and it's mm. interesting that Danielle and Laura, you both play mothers in your films, also mm. grieving sons, and you have sons off screen as mm. well. Did you share an Angela's sort of perspective there of pulling from your own life, or did you prefer to keep it separate? Um, I, it's, a, it's a hint of it, but I had to come home to him every day, right? Yeah. And he still wants uh, side money for various things <laughs> and uh, an array of foods to eat. <laughs> uh, need to talk about whatever the heck is interesting to him, like Fortnite or whatnot. <laughs> but, um, I think the historical nature of uh, Till mm. was weight enough. You know, and the the, the nature of it being no a part of a continuum that persists to this day, that that was that that was a load, uh, a persisting load that um, I didn't necessarily have to pull from my personal experience in order to uh, to do. But I mean, I would dare cry that it might have flickered in here and there, but mm. assuredly, um, knowing that this happened, knowing that it persists in happening, is something that you think about or I thought about all the time. Mm -hmm. They have a different set of rules for Negroes down there. Are you listening? Yes. You have to be extra careful with white people. You can't risk looking at them the wrong way. I know. Bo. Oh. Be small down there. Like this? <laughs> yeah, to and that it would seem to be to every son, you know, mm, yeah. that sort of instance, yeah. you know, to every mother's son or just and we're the, directly I, the coming idea off of, of that. Yeah. From, from 2020, we're yeah. coming off of it. From mm -hmm. 21, we're coming off of, mm -hmm. you know, literally a week ago, a couple of weeks ago, a young man was killed in Mississippi, you know, by an officer mm -hmm. of the same age, like he's 15. Mm -hmm. So it's in, it's a, it's a perpetual psychic experience and, um, and it can, and hit you emotionally at, all orders of time. Right. I was reading your, you yeah. were saying your preparation was mostly just pulling from the state of, you know, race relations in this country yeah, sure. and just being aware of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rich, like, I mean, I've had a rich historical uh, background academically, but then uh, to think about the, the present, that yeah. that's just a, an, a, an itch that is never scratched. Laura, I think both of your films, and I wonder if anyone else, they had, um, Therapists available to the mm -hmm. cast because of the yeah. difficult subject matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Too, which was incredible, mm -hmm. and in in our case, used daily by crew and mm -hmm. cast, mm -hmm. which was amazing. And I, you know, I would just speak to what you were both saying about uh, grief and the opportunity as actors to explore our emotional life and the state of the world's emotional life. In our case, the film addresses um, mental health crises amongst teenagers. You need to speak to him. I don't know what to do anymore. You just, he needs you, Peter. You can't just abandon him. I'm not abandoning him. Why do you keep saying these things? Just... Okay. Look, the other day, I, I, I asked him to, I don't even remember what take his plate out or something, and he just looked at me um, with, uh, with so much hatred. I thought, he, I thought he was gonna... What? He scares me, okay? 
while we're starting the film, the numbers are skyrocketing mm -hmm. within this pandemic and mm -hmm. perhaps also the impact of social media mm -hmm. in the lockdown. Um, and so raising children while also telling the story, um, I think, too, I was just looking at what was around me every day. And I remember the first day I did a scene in the film with my son talking about not being able to handle the, the anxiety mm -hmm. that he's going through. My daughter was online in school, alone in her room. And I said, babe, is there anything about this that you can find joy in it or comfort in it? And she, uh, she said to me, well, mom, you know, I guess you know, the only positive that I can take that's sort of calming me is like, at least right now, I'm here in my room, I don't have to be scared every day that I'm gonna get shot at school. Oh and here I am, you know, parenting a 16 year old in crisis thinking, this is a horrific epidemic of cultural anxiety, global anxiety, and that's when the lines are blurred and you're not searching for understanding. You're, yeah. we're all in Living it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just so heartbreaking to imagine what, what we're all carrying, but what our kids right now are carrying. Right. It was a, yeah, an amazing reminder. That's an interesting that they had that um, mental health option available. For, would, you, would you all like that on set? I mean, when I think about the intensity of the work, it makes sense to me that that would be provided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's something I hadn't amazing. heard of, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. We had someone every day. I mean, the crew would have emotional breakdowns, yeah. like just moments of like utter and complete crying. It was, it's, it's a thing. Yeah. It, it, and, and people would have to take moments to step away, you know, or we would, it wouldn't always even be a traumatic scene. It would just be <laughs> literally conversation. And then it would just, the waterworks start. So. People would just step away and have a conversation with a the therapist. It's it's the it's a simple, easy, beautiful thing. So mm. people can maintain some sense of wellness as we intentionally move through challenge mm. together. Right. Right. It's so good to make that a conversation that's like foregrounded, like it's okay not to be okay and to seek help for it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And to advocate for yourself in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, I don't know big fear sometimes on set, there's this constant feeling of like, you have to go, 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 and everyone's, mm. like you can't stop because people are, stop the right yeah, the because everyone's yeah. relying on each other. Yeah. So it's like one person, <laughs> yeah. you feel like you're letting down all these other people. But yeah, I feel like as soon as people start speaking up about, you know, yeah, I'm not feeling great or I need to talk to someone, then I think it's good for everyone. Mm -hmm. Emma, you were saying you had a very different kind of sort of like, therapeutic experience in Lady Chatterley's Lover, Ooh. which, uh, <laughs> yes, you guys need super hot. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was hot, too. <laughs> and so you, it's, an, it's a movie where you're in an unhappily, uh, you're unhappily married, yep. and you are seeking refuge in a relationship that fulfills mm -hmm. you both emotionally and intimately. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is bearing yourself physically at one point, you literally like run naked around in the rain. And you yeah. said that that was the scene that made you want to do it because it seemed yeah. such a challenge to you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were sort of talking about this earlier and you put it really well, which is that um, I, it was, when I was reading the script, it stood out because I'd never seen it on screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, 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 it might exist somewhere, but for me, I was just like, wow. I, it felt really bold and it felt terrifying to me. And so sort of very enticing. Um, and yeah, it's exactly what it was. And it was sort of this thing, I feel like in filmmaking a lot of the time, there are always some elements of what you're doing, or most of the elements to what you're doing are sort of, you know, imagined or pretend, and that's why we love what we, we do. But there was nothing about that that you could possibly fake. So that we were like <laughs> under rain, completely naked, in the middle of a valley in Wales. And we just had to like run and like dance <laughs> wow. and like catch each other. And it was, yeah, completely terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't. She was saying like, like completely, not even like protection at all. Like I would. No, be, completely that's naked. That's brave. Yeah. yeah. And the whole crew was naked as well. Every, <laughs> by the end of the day, <laughs> no. 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 The man. Did. I don't want to see the crew naked. No. You don't want to see that. No, I wouldn't. All of us, you want to see that. Just see everybody. All of the bodies are free.
I've been waiting for you. Don't you think folks will become suspicious if you keep coming here? Imagine how lowered you'd feel, you, with your husband's gamekeeper. You afraid? I bloody well am. Emma, you were saying intimate intimacy coordinators played a big role in that film too. Yeah, huge role. Yeah. Who among you have, have worked with the one before? Mm -hmm. Not that yet. That would be new for me. It yeah. would be for me too. Yeah. I don't know how I'd feel about it. Is it kind yeah. of more embarrassing to be talking about it than just? And where to put it? hands here? Yeah. No, it's so it's really so good. Um, and so necessary, I think, especially in this, just because the amount of um, nudity and the amount of sex scenes that the film required. And we had, like, two weeks rehearsal, and we worked with Ito O'Brien, who also did Normal People, so she was, like, done it all. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's a bit... And she has a background in dance, and so I think they actually choreographed a lot of the sex scenes with dancers before Jack and I entered mm -hmm. the equation. And then, yeah, it's exactly that. It's sort of, like, where you put hands and then what you're comfortable with, what you're not. And you just walk it through beat by beat, so it, like, takes any sexiness out of it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, yeah, it just means that you know exactly what you're doing so that in the moment when you're acting, you can let go and you don't have to worry about mm. being uncomfortable or accidentally making someone else uncomfortable. Um, but it kind of made me think... Oh, I like to liken it to sort of, like, choreographing a fight scene. You'd never do that without a stunt mm. coordinator. Yeah. Mm. And it's sort of the same. You yeah. can apply it to sex scenes as that... Why would you ever do that without, you know, mm. uh, intimacy coordinator? Yeah. yeah. And intimacy coordinators really sprung up in the wake of, you know, 2017, yeah. the Me Too movement, which it's crazy, it's been five years since that, um, first started reckoning within Hollywood. Um, have you all noticed things that have tangibly changed since then, uh, since 2017? Some. Mm. some. Not all. Not all. If I'm struggling to think of something, that says it all a bit. But then I don't know, like, I don't know. I think there's more of a dialogue mm -hmm. and an awareness about stuff. More but sensitivity. There's more sensitivity, mm -hmm. but I think there's still a fear on sets of people being... Yeah, I just think within our industry, there are so many power dynamics in within the structure of mm -hmm. how everything works, and even on a set. Yeah. And it's so hard to break through those barriers to be able to ever vocalise that you're uncomfortable or, yeah. And if you don't, though, yeah. one thing I love bearing witness to in the last few years is you feel crew members feeling your discomfort yeah. and someone is there to hold your hand. Yeah. Someone is there. I mean, in the case of mm -hmm. stunt or intimacy, or intimacy coordinators, yeah. I certainly remember years of you're in it, the love scene's starting, mm -hmm. and you feel slightly uncomfortable. Right. And your leading man or a crew member goes, oh, she's fine. You're going to be fine with this, right? If I... Mm -hmm. And so you're shamed if you to, to yeah. say, it at all. say anything. Yeah. And mm -hmm. now an it feels awareness. like everyone's yeah. making mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So good. even if there are people who aren't mm. looking out for you, there are others who really are. Yeah. And there are women on set. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, before... I, I, my hair and makeup was done by men. I, I, there was no woman yeah, yeah, in the movie, yeah. and I was 11. And, you know, if I was uncomfortable, who did I tell? And now, mm -hmm. thank God, mm -hmm. uh, for a search for, you know, gender and diversity parity where we feel represented mm -hmm. and heard and understood and have colleagues who can, who can have our back and get us is, is huge. Mm -hmm. Still a lot of work to do, but that's... That feels massive. Do you all feel that as well? I, I sense that. Now, I'm sitting here trying to remember different different moments, you know, yeah. where I had, had those love love scenes, you know, whether it was What's Love or whether it was um, John Sayles' City of Hope, you know, where you're, you're laid bare, you know, and it's like how, and you weren't, there was no conversation about what mm. all we're going to show or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or whatever, so being, you know, slightly uncomfortable, but, um, and what you just got to, like, push on through it. And sometimes it was, I remember feeling an insensitivity from the top down. I mean, and crews just going around and oh, no yeah. one's making sure mm. you're covered oh. or, you know, so mm. it was very interesting. You just, you know, like always, advocate for yourself, you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
yeah, it's more of an awareness and sensitivity now, which is a good thing. Yeah. I do think about sometimes, though, and, like, not to begrudge, you know, if people have had, like, a substance abuse problem or alcohol problem, I do love to sort of, if somebody's trying to do good, and I do think people deserve ch second chances and all that, and I'm all for that, but I do sometimes catch myself and go, God, if it was a girl, would you be giving her jobs? Right. If it was a girl who was a recovering alcoholic, would she be still getting work? Because I'm struggling to think of even an example of an actress who you know, might have been crazy alcoholic or a crazy drug problem who was then had a renaissance in their career when they cleaned their act up. Sometimes I feel a little bit like, would that happen for a woman? I'd like to think so, but... You don't know, yeah. Yeah. More when we return. We found the boys. They're alive. Based on the incredible true story. How do you think we're going to get those kids out? From Academy Award winner Ron Howard. We could use a couple more divers. Oh, yeah. A tale of hope and the power of the human spirit. The whole thing is insane. We're desperate. One of Ron Howard's best films. It's their only chance. 13 Lives. Rated PG-13 for your consideration. Welcome back. This is the Envelope Actresses Roundtable. Janelle, I wanted to ask you, um, you said that your friends who have seen Glass Onion, which is the Knives Out sequel, or I guess we're calling it what? Next uh, installment? A new murder mystery. New murder mystery. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the people who've seen you in it really think they're seeing like you, who you are to them off screen, and someone you haven't represented that part of yourself yet in a role. What makes, like, what are we seeing that's the real Janelle in this role, do you think? I mean, I can't spoil. Okay, okay. We're not, we don't need to spoil. Um, I mean, there are pieces of us in all our roles, you know, and I think this is a, a specific role where I really, really got to play. Like, I got to be parts of me that I, I don't think I've seen on, on screen. And I got to develop new, new parts of me that I didn't even know I had. And that's just the power, I think, of, of Ryan Johnson, you know, our director, writer, uh, who I've been wanting to work with since I saw his movie Looper. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, if I ever get an opportunity to work with this guy, because he was doing something super innovative in the sci-fi space. I don't know if you guys saw Looper. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. like, it's amazing. And then I went down this rabbit hole, watched everything. Obviously, I liked the first Knives Out. And I read the script, and I was just like, it's a yes. <laughs> it's a hell yes. That is the common thread here. Every single one of you is holding on for dear life to Miles Bryan's golden and each of you, you'll stab a friend in the back to hold on. That is what I believe. I knew, I knew that I was very fortunate, though, to have done like the films that I've been in, because all of that prepared me for this role. Mm. This is like to me that role where, it, if it had not been for the other work that I've that I've been so fortunate and blessed to do. Um, I wouldn't have been equipped, so. I feel like your first film big role was uh, 2016 with Moonlight, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, some people who have a background in music, it takes them a minute to like jump or be taken seriously in another arena, but you kind of, out of the gate, I think it was like, okay, she's an actress too. You, <laughs> or was that from the outside, was it actually more difficult to convince people to see you seriously? I mean, I read scripts. I got told no, you know, privately. Um, mm -hmm. It, like everybody else, uh, I mean, I studied acting. A lot of people just didn't know I, my background. Like, I have been doing theater. I went to school for it. I did, you know, Shakespearean after-school programs. I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I'm a lot of things, and I think music was the yeah. main vehicle yeah. that kind of okay. lets you know, like, mm -hmm. okay, that took me around the world, and um, which is a blessing because music is that uniner in that way. It's, it doesn't, it's nothing, it's no art form like it. And also the same with movies too. You know, it's 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 unique, and I think it's all storytelling. So I, I consider myself to be a storyteller, and I'm just fortunate to always have something to say. Yeah. Carrie, you worked with Martin McDonough on the Banshees of Inisherin, and you've worked with him many times. He said he wrote the part for you in which you play. You know, it's kind of lonely woman who's torn between staying on her very small island with her family and leaving to follow her dreams. How different is it working with a filmmaker who knows you so well? 
Yeah, and plays. I mean, I'd done a little bit, a tiny part in Three Billboards, but it was really the plays that I'd done before, yeah. Mm -hmm. Three Billboards was more like just, do you want to just do this part for fun or whatever? But um, the other parts in the plays were big parts, you know, it was like a year and a half. Wow. Yeah, doing the Royal Shakespeare Company for a year and a half, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, it was a bit like, yeah, it was great, but it was like, oh, Christ, by the end of it, like... <laughs> Yeah. Because it was Hamlet, it was the other play I had to oh do at God, the same yeah. time, and it was four hours long. Were you oh doing reps? Yes, what was the other one? Was Martin's play. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. one? Oh my God. Yeah. So it was tough enough going now, yeah, but at the same time, great, you know, because we became friends, and then right. I did another play with him, and it went to New York, and blah, 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 blah. So, <laughs> you know, it was great. Has he said something to you when he was drunk? No, I prefer him when he's drunk. It's all the rest of the time I have the problem with. What's the matter then? He's dull, Siobhan. What, he's what? He's dull. I mean, but he's always been dull. What's changed? I've changed. I just don't have a place for dullness in my life anymore. But you live on an island off the coast of Ireland, Colin. What the hell are you hoping for, like? Does it ever blow your mind that you're, like, one of his frequent collaborators? And I was reading that when you were little, growing up in Ireland, you wrote to Hollywood agents seeking mentorship? Yeah, Mike Ovitz, I went right to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right to an agent, I'm going straight. Yeah, because my mother used to get the Vanity Fair Hollywood issue and I'd be like, doo -doo -doo, like looking for production oh my companies God. and looking for yeah. like, yeah, it was oh, years yeah, ago. Look at you. Been about, like, school, like, so? No, before then I was very young because I was still writing where I'd put my finger between the words to make it perfect. <laughs> yeah, and the line underneath, you know, so it would be so look so cute. nice. Uh, well, or demented. Did you get a response? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it. No, I, I never it. No got response. A never mm -hmm. got a Not response. one response? Of course not. Now they're all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, at the time, of course, he wasn't going to reply to me. Like, But, yeah, um, I, I don't see it like that because it was spread out. You know what I mean? Those parts were, there was big years in between and I did other jobs. So I don't seem like I'm this collaborator. He did other jobs and I did other jobs. So it just sort of... And then you don't want to put pressure on somebody when you're friends with them that, like, you know, anytime they speak about a project, that there's this anxiety of, like, is there part for me in it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know what? It's hard. Right. Uh, you kind of have to allow the person their own artistic expression, too. So I try and separate, like, a friendship from, a, from someone who can employ you. Yeah. 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 Danielle, you have been working for so long, and yet Till is your first lead in a studio feature film. Is there ever a part of you that's like, yeah, about damn time? Uh, it comes when it comes. I, it's not a pushing. I'm, I'm not interested in trying to make it happen in a certain way. I don't feel like it's a making. It's a. It's just a continuing. Um, the other things were a part of me getting to the now. And these current nows will be a part of me getting to the next. And um, I'm not in a rush to go anywhere. Well, listen, <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. I'm Thank one you, of the one who was blessed to be able to see your performance. And mm -hmm. I was just riveted to my seat and just fell so head over heels mm -hmm. in love with the work you were doing. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely mm -hmm. stunning. I was like, whatever's out here, give it to her. <laughs> 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 give it to her. Um, I mean, just, just you know, things and emo emotion and choices mm. that are just so riveting and so real and so grounded. Can you go back to my place and bring back Emmett's black suit, the one he wore last Christmas? Mama can tell you exactly where it is. And make sure to get my black dress that Bo would approve of and his matching tie. Emmett loved this suit. It's how he'd like to be seen. Seen. Mimi, Bo's in no kind of shape to be seen by anyone. He's in just the right shape. The whole world has to see what happened to my son. Mrs. Bradley, can I at least fix him up a bit just to make him more... No one's going to believe what I just saw. No. They have to see it for themselves. So, mm. thank you. Aww, thank you. I can thank her now. Oh, that's so real. That's <laughs> soon enough. I, you that's, know, that's I know okay. where to find you. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I, that's yeah. what I was saying. I, we're all so eager to see each other's films, mm -hmm. but I got to see Carrie's 
incredible performance uh, thanks. last night in just one of the most beautiful gifts to what it is to be human, mm -hmm. how we can lose ourselves. Um, it is such a gorgeous film, and Carrie is so incredible in it. It's such an amazing gift to watch you in that movie. And I was telling her about, of all the moments, there's so much heartbreak and there's so much desperation and loneliness and despair mm -hmm. and, and deep love with she and her brother, Colin Farrell, mm -hmm. who's also just, they're all so extraordinary in this movie. What are you doing home? Brother, what are you doing home? I knocked on Colm Sonny Larry, he's just sitting there. Sitting there doing what? Sitting there doing nothing. Smoking. Was he asleep? He was smoking, Siobhan. How do you smoke in your sleep, like? It's that every fleeting moment she has, she fills with an entire other story. Mm -hmm. And that's just so beautiful to watch. Thanks, Amelia. Oh, my God, so fun. <laughs> Thanks, Amelia. I can't wait for everybody to see that movie. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's so rare everyone gets the chance to like gush over each other, you yeah. know, to like compliment yeah. one another. Yeah. And, see and it's it. hard to receive it. I'm not oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to receive it. Took me years. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's grand bike. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then they seem, that's rude though, too. So you yeah. have to be able to, yeah. the person's giving something, doing something nice. Yeah. Yeah, my, For me, yeah. in, in, in your piece, there's a moment, and it's, it's, it's just, it, it, you can tell, it's as if, emotion could overtake one, could o completely overtake you, but you had such command and yet allowed it to take you at the same time. Mm. And there was yet such pain, such deep well of pain, but also such dignity mm. and strength, yeah. you know? That and a mother's mainly. love. Yeah, yeah. 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 that was oh. mine. So, mm, mm, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> So we were at an actress's round table and I've had questions about why necessarily we divide among gender lines in these panels and in these, you know, even the nominations. And Emma, Janelle, you both identify as non-binary, have been really outspoken about... <laughs> hey! <laughs> see you. Do you, I see you. <laughs> Do you think that it's time we get rid of those best actress, best actor categories? Should it be more all-encompassing yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, why not yeah, yeah i think yeah. so i think it's amazing the world is evolving we're evolving mm -hmm. ever evolving i am at least mm -hmm. um so what yeah. about you yeah i agree i think that like making these spaces as fluid as possible will also mean that the work can evolve yeah. to exist somewhere that is free from i don't know more binary constraints maybe um not just to do with gender. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's about creating a space where everyone can feel represented. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about, in the way you talked about why you wanted to be a part of Lady Chatterley's Lover, that this is based on a book that was written in, what, 1928? Yeah. Right. And at the time, it was like so scandalous because a woman was expressing her sexuality. And part of the reason you talked about wanting to do it was to destigmatize sexuality and femininity in 2022, so yeah. all these years later, it's like, why do you think it's still so taboo? Because I just think we still struggle to talk honestly and openly about female pleasure. Mm. 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 And I just, it's just something that, I mean, yeah, I'm still learning about and about myself. And it's just, I feel like women especially, or um, yeah, just don't, there's no dialogue really. And so we're always, I feel like, for me personally, I've always been on the back foot about learning about stuff about myself um, because there's no sort of, yeah, open communication about it or there's no representation of it on screen either, really. Yeah. So, yeah, I was excited to, for the chance to really explore someone who goes on a journey of sort of finding themselves through finding their sexuality and discovering how empowered right. that can make them. Emma, you worked with Harry Styles in My Policeman and you also played uh, Princess Diana in The Crown. And obviously those are both figures who really loom large in the public imagination. So I'm wondering if, you know, spending time in their orbits has changed the way that you view fame. Yeah, sort of a bit alien um, to me. And also I think I've had a weird one when The Crown came out, it was in the middle of the pandemic. So I was, 
I, in retrospect, I think I feel very lucky because I think I was cushioned from the fame side of things or being catapulted overnight into that world because every, I was still in my flat with like my flatmates who I've lived with for six years and who you still do it. yeah I still do I love that yeah yeah who don't just don't put up with any of my <laughs> ever um <laughs> yeah I told them yesterday I was thinking about getting a perm because um, <laughs> I curled my hair for some press and I really liked it and I was like guys I'm gonna get a perm and their reaction was just like absolutely not <laughs> you will not be coming home if you get that <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah and so I think like yeah being in that environment that was so grounding whilst all that was happening really cushioned it and made me keep my feet feet on the floor um yeah yeah women are held to such intense standards in Hollywood and Carrie I've read you talk about um how you've resisted you know beauty procedures that kind of thing because you want to look natural I wouldn't say that now no? I spend a okay. fortune on face creams oh my god <laughs> face I'm, creams is like yeah but still I don't even like that either because I feel like even when I have an appointment for something I call it a woman's appointment and it's nobody's <laughs> business but my own and I feel that way with my yeah. if I have a boyfriend or my family or public that you can have your private whatever you call them, grooming things, yeah. and they're yours and they're private and they're not to be disclosed to anyone. And that's my, and I, you know, I don't think, I don't think saying do one thing or don't do another is like nice mm. either, do you know, because yeah. everyone's entitled to their own, um, to look whatever way they want. So I don't think saying, oh, well, if you do certain things that makes you less of, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. know, I, I don't know the answer to that. And if you are, I think if you have held to beauty standards, I honestly don't really, because I've hmm. looked up to actresses who, you know, who've had great careers and they didn't play that game. Do you know what I mean? So I think, you know, it's kind of, I suppose, who, what kind of an actor do you want to be? And everyone's different yeah. and there's roles for all different kinds mm -hmm. of people. And so, do you know, it's just like, I'm, I'm more inspired by people who are, have a career that lasts their whole life, you know, and then, and, and you can, and that they grow and, and that's a good thing. Yeah. You know? Is it hard to, how do you balance that? I mean, being looked at in that way and feeling like do you, are, you're held to a certain standard, but you know, there's a camera on, on you all the time. Like, Laura, you've talked a little bit about that in some of your press. Like, yeah, I mean, I think again, and I think you spoke so beautifully to it, you know, it is everyone's personal story mm -hmm. um, that they should have ownership of. Um, but I was raised by actors, so I was born into understanding that there was something else you have to navigate mm. if you're going to be an artist of any kind, and you get to choose. But um, I wouldn't have known I had a choice if I didn't have hmm. an actor mother raising me. Mm -hmm. That that who I date or how I want to be perceived mm. in my own body and um, how I want to age, how I want to raise my children, that that gets to be mine. I, I really am so grateful that someone had to go through it before me to mm. tell me what not to what? get involved in. So yeah. I, I feel really blessed. Yeah. Are there things that you all refuse to do in a film now that maybe you would have done earlier in your career? Mm. I'm not dancing naked in the rain. <laughs> I was going to if I would have done it. Please. Boom. <laughs> Knowing now when I was in hindsight, I might have done it then. <laughs> definitely not doing that. So, oh, well, I, I missed that one. Really. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to let it. Well, we need to see it. We need to see it. Oh, Lord. You know? <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> you know? <laughs> Even in Stella, I kept my uh, my pajamas on. And <laughs> <laughs> he got naked. But <laughs> no, I'm gonna capitalize at the right moment. Yeah, God. God. I mean, when you trust the director, and like if I directed something, I would probably mm -hmm. do it. Like if I was the director, mm -hmm. I had the final control yeah. over yeah. it. I would yeah. absolutely I very, just. Yeah. The role, you know, called for it, and I think a long time ago, though, I probably would have been like, no, mm. I don't mm. think so. But um, I think it's always dictated yeah. by yeah how safe you feel, and I think it will probably it, yeah what you feel comfortable doing yeah. in a project is so determined by yeah the people around you, the director. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. about agency, yeah, and also you where you're out yeah. with yourself. Yeah. The it's yeah. about agency too. I think mm. I think that also to like a lot of women, a lot of non-binary folks, a lot of mm. folks mm. who have felt like systemically 
they've been taken advantage of has just been like a, yeah. you know, you're scared, you're fearful. But I think there's real conversation happening around agency. Yeah. And also about respectability politics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is like, ugh. I'm just like, I, I despise that sort of like, way of of living and saying like women can't do this or you shouldn't be dressed mm -hmm. like that or you are this type of person because you're dressed like all of those or you look talk like this you shouldn't you have there's some sort of like assimilation yeah that the needs culture to happen, of assumption right yeah. and i'm just like you know my spirit is just too free for that <laughs> it really is yeah. and um I love the conversations and support I think that women are even having with each other. Like, mm -hmm. don't try to slut shame. Don't mm -hmm. try and say just because somebody took their clothes off on mm -hmm. screen or or they don't want to. Like, it's it's about agency yeah. and respect people's agency. And I, I love that those conversations I'm seeing a lot more. I understand. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's also like, yeah. well, the way media in, and images are shared today, yeah. they will snatch any element oh, oh of God. a film or a project yeah. in general. And then it's memeable. It's it's yeah. something that will live yeah. in <laughs> the, it will reverberate and echo into the ether, mm -hmm. into all kinds of things. Yeah. And so that feels, that feels uncomfortable. Yeah. And yeah. I can understand it, but like also, I don't know, I have this just a thing of like releasing it that's yeah. not a, a defining factor yeah. of who I am. Mm -hmm. Even though somebody No power, I give might, it no power. You know, mm -hmm. somebody yeah. might try to rip the agency from the the original making mm -hmm. of the image. Yeah, that 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 doesn't scar it. Yeah, from the truth of the experience that you mm -hmm. had with it. They're telling me to wrap it up, and I'm like, all right, so we're all gonna strip <laughs> off our clothes, <laughs> run around, run around. around. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on. Um, I have so many more questions, but thank you so much for talking so to me, and I loved hearing you all talk to each other. And good luck this award yeah. season. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you. LA Times on Spectrum News 1, The Envelope Roundtable, was presented by the United Artists releasing Orion and MGM Studios film, Till, for your awards consideration in all categories.